the gift of faith is a spirit having the same spirit of faith. Say spirit of faith. It is a spirit. It is an opinion. It is a feeling of faith that is in you. That's why it's called a spirit of faith. Having the same spirit of faith, I believed, therefore I spoke. Additionally, before the cross, you needed to take action because it was your faith. After the cross, you cannot take action. You must enter into rest and confess. Before the cross, the body was used for works. After the cross, the body is not used. The mouth is used because the mouth is an expression of your mind. What you think you say, that's not acting. In the past, you had to rely on your own efforts, on what you accomplished, and the one who worked the hardest would come out on top. Your own competition was present, but after the cross, the competition is over. We are all more than conquerors. However, then we benefit when we confess the written word, having the same spirit of faith. I believe, therefore I spoke. Then also, after it says that faith is a spirit, it says that it is a law. Faith is a law. Let's quickly look at Romans. Romans chapter 3, verse 27. Does everyone have it? Romans chapter 3, verse 27. This is a class we are presenting, a teaching. Nobody had taught this for 2,000 years. Yet today, you are listening to it. For the very first time tonight, I am listening to myself explain it in the way that I am doing. This is the science that we are going to bring to universities, to schools, to nations, so that God transforms the nations. Faith is the certainty of what we hope for, the belief in what we can't see. Today you'll leave here with potential. Look, today the Lord will enrich you more than you are now. Today you are going to live here with a kind of authority. So this knowledge that we are going to talk about today is going to give you certainty. Remember, certainty does not come from your flesh. Jesus said, the flesh profits nothing. The flesh is weak. The desires of the flesh are not subject to the law of God. This means that certainty does not come from you. Faith is based on what you hear. So hearing this, it will add certainty to you. And by adding certainty, it gives you conviction. Yours, unseen. Let's continue 327. We are talking about faith. It says, where is boasting then? It is what? Excluded by which law? For that of the works? No. But which law are we talking about? So, what exactly is faith? It is a law. It's a law. Listen to this. It's a law that only God works for now because of that law before it indicates it there. For the works, which law was it? The law of works. Before the cross, was the law of faith at work? No, it was the law of what? The law of works. It was the law of the works. You had to achieve, fulfill, eye for an eye, tooth for a tooth. He who does it, pays it. That was the law, the law of works. But then, when Christ dies and rises again, he changes the law, and now it is the law of faith. Say, the law of faith, it's a powerful law. Now notice that in the law of faith, there is no boasting. Though we glory in Christ, do we not glory in him? Glory to God, I am blessed, I can do all things in Christ, but that is glorying in Christ. Now personal boasting, the law of faith excludes it. Because it is not you, it is the gift of God that God put that does it for you. You are the beneficiary. How are you going to boast? It is the gift that God gave me. God is the one who has done all this.